right here you're looking at the heart of a 46 inch Samsung DLP TV. This unit has quit working. Is it the bulb? Is it what is called the color wheel? Or is it simply just dust and dirt that is collected over the years like you see here? We're going to show you how to take this part of the unit out of your television and refurbish it, clean it up, and then open up and inspect it to see if your color wheel or your bulb might be the reason your DLP TV no longer works. Some of the symptoms you might be having are just a whining noise coming out of the TV or the fact that when you turn it on it only stays on for a minute and then shuts itself back off. The model that we're going to work on on this video, and there's another video of a DLP TV repair on my channel, but this one is model number HL-R4667W. This TV was made in September of 2005. So grab a screwdriver, a vacuum cleaner, and a lot of patience and a little bit of time. And let's take, the, take this unit apart. You can take yours apart together along with me, and we'll see if we can get this unit working again. It's really not as hard as it looks. Let's get started. For this project, you're gonna need either a power screwdriver with a Phillips head, or just a regular Phillips head screwdriver, whichever is cheapest and whichever you have handy there at the house. I would recommend the power one, just simply because these screws are quite numerous and it's gonna take you a while to unscrew them all. This should be about what the back of your TV looks like. And let me show you where all those screws are that you're gonna to have to remove to remove this back cover. There is a screw here, 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 here. There's a couple right there. There's one here, there, right there, right there, and right there. And you might as well take this one out too. Well, actually, I don't think there is a screw right there. But in any case, go ahead and remove all those screws. You don't need to remove the screws on this cover. This is the lamp cover. You don't need to take those off because that whole part will come off with the back of the TV. And then when you remove the screws, the back cover just pops off just like that. With the back cover removed, we need to remove the screw that holds the lamp in place. That screw will be right here. Remove that screw, grab this little handle, and then pull the bulb straight out. Next, take a moment and inspect your bulb. Look on the inside. You'll see that there's a plastic piece protruding from the middle, almost like a satellite dish thing. See that part right there? If that part is cracked, or there's glass laying around on the inside of your bulb, or you see black inside there, it's very likely that this bulb is damaged. Now the one that you're looking at here is probably okay, but I don't know for sure yet. I am seeing a little bit of white residue on the inside, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the bulb is bad, okay? So if you're not seeing any glass or any black or that middle piece isn't broken, your bulb is probably okay. Next, to remove that platform that we saw at the beginning of the video, which is now housed inside of this TV, just so you can see what it looks like. We're going to remove a few screws. There is a screw here, there's a screw there, and then there's two screws that hold them on this metal bracket. Go ahead and take those off and remove this metal bracket. Then you're going to see some connections and cables that need to be disconnected. And on this particular model, there's one right here, there's one right here, and there's this cable right here. All of those need to come off. To remove the ribbon cables, just grab a hold of it with your thumb and your forefinger, squeeze it, and then pull up. There's a little lock on the side, you see here? When you squeeze it, that's the lock that lets go. All right, and then there's one up on top, up here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Put your thumb on the front part, push in, and lift. And you'll see that that one there also has that same interlocking lock that's on the side. Okay? 
Now, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge because there are these screw-in things here on the side. What I had to do is use a, a flathead screwdriver and poke it in there and unscrew it with the flathead screwdriver. The ultimate goal is to get this thing out and once you've gotten all the screws loosened up, that's what happens. It just comes out and hangs there. So for these ribbon cables, there is this uh, plastic connector here. Just pull the ribbon cables out of the plastic connector and then just kind of wrap them up and let them hang over the top here, if you can. Might have to bend them over a little bit to get them to stay. So once you do that, uh, there's only one other thing you have to do, and that's to take off this ground wire that's screwed up here at the top. So just remove that ground wire. Once you have all that done, this part here is just going to pull out, okay? Now, if I haven't said it before, you can see here, I don't have anything plugged into this unit. You should never do this while everything is plugged in. But at the same time, this unit does have a safety interlock. That little interlock switch is right here. It's located just left of where the bulb goes in. So, once you have all that done that we've described, you're going to grab a hold of this with both hands. One hand right here, one hand over on this side, and you're going to pull the unit out. And the unit is going to just slide out of the back. You may have a little bit of trouble with this little plastic guy that's right here. It doesn't matter if that breaks off. Just pull it past it or just break this part off so it's not in your way anymore. It's not a big deal. And again, we're going to pull this whole projection unit out of the back of the case. One quick note. And it doesn't hurt anything, but you actually don't have to remove this ground wire after all. Once I got the unit past this wire, I realized it wasn't in the way of anything. And uh, so you can go ahead and put that ground wire screw back on. Or if you haven't taken it off yet, you don't have to. Before the unit will completely come out of the TV, we do need to take one more wire off. And that's this guy right here. You can see him right there in the front. Squeeze that and lift up. And then that wire can just hang off to the side. Now is the part where the vacuum cleaner is going to come in handy. And you'll need a vacuum cleaner or maybe even a uh, one of those shop vacs that has a hose on it. And we're going to clean off all this crap that you see here on these fans. See how dirty this fan is? So there's this fan, and then right around the front here is this fan. But I'm going to recommend that you take this fan off to get to behind it, because there's a heat sink back behind it that's probably dirty also. In fact, you can see uh, a lot of the dirt along here. But there's, uh, there's two screws that hold this fan in place. You can see one right there, one right there. Go ahead and take those two screws out and make sure that you can get your vacuum cleaner. And if it has a brush on it, even better. Because you can take that brush and kind of work at a lot of the dust that's on that fan and get it all nice and sparkly clean looking. And the same thing with over this side here. This housing here that this fan is attached to comes off. And you've got a screw here, a screw here, and you've got a screw on this side. And I believe that screw right there will also uh, help take the unit apart. So take all those screws out, and let's take that vacuum cleaner to this entire housing here, this black housing, and uh, get all the dust and grime and dirt off of it. And then while you're at it, take that same brush and go back at this particular circuit board here that you see hanging out of the side of the TV. This kind of pulled out a bit when I pulled the unit out of the back. But uh, get all of this grime and dust that you see here. That way it doesn't get sucked back into the system and, uh, and get you all dirtied up again. There's also uh, something you can do, and this is actually your projection lens. You want to be careful not to scratch this part, but uh, at the same time you might also want to clean it. And what I would recommend is a clean white t-shirt, nice soft white cotton t-shirt, and just wipe over the top of it. If wiping over the top of it doesn't get it clean, then um, you might want to put a little alcohol right on this. Don't pour alcohol on, on the lens, but pour some alcohol on this part, and then uh, rub the alcohol on there. Clean that guy up. Okay, so you should have a nice, sparkling, clear 
uh, unit there, and you can see a little bit of the dirt that's still hanging out here on this uh, this guy right here. See that? So I'm going to need to take some alcohol to mine. So here you can see where I've taken the first fan off, the first fan that goes right there, and you can see just how nasty that heat sink is that it's attached to. We need to get all that off. Here's what the other housing looks like when you take it off of the unit. And we'll come around here to the side. And you can take this housing apart. In fact, that screw that we saw up on the top is actually what keeps this unit together. That's that screw right there. So you can take that screw off and you can take this screw off. Remove, pull the housing apart and then you're able to get inside and get to the back end of this nasty looking fan. All right, so here's how mine looks after dusting it up a little bit. You can see there's still a little bit of dust on there, but it's a whole lot better than it was. And what I used was a, a little foam brush like this and a little tiny paint brush to loosen up the dirt because my vacuum cleaner doesn't have that attachment. And uh, here's what the big fan looks like after it's all cleaned up. Now, in your troubleshooting as to what's wrong with your TV, remember that both of these fans have to be turning once the power is turned on. If one of these fans doesn't turn, the unit will not come on. So part of its checking when you turn the power on is to make sure these two fans are, are turning. And if they're not, the TV won't power on. So keep that in mind. Our next task is to check the color wheel. The color wheel lives inside this housing here this guy right here. There are two screws that hold it on. There's one right there and there's one right there. So you need to remove those two screws and then very carefully lift that piece out. You can see that there are two wires going up underneath there. There's one there and there's one there and both of those wires are attached here to this piece. There you see it. So we need to be very careful not to damage those wires, especially this one, because it uses a really thin orange ribbon cable that you can tear. And if you tear that, then, well, it's over, at least for that fan. So if your color wheel is good, then you won't have to buy another color wheel. If it's bad, then that's going to be on your parts list. All right, so let's go ahead and remove those screws and remove the housing. Once you do get the two screws loosened up, let's go ahead and remove these two wires just to make sure we don't mess them up. Now this one here, you just kind of grab a hold of it and it pulls out. Nothing to squeeze on that one. And the same thing with this one. Very carefully grab it from the sides. And that one just kind of pulls out. And see, there's all that connects is those little four like foil stripes right there on that card or that uh, ribbon cable. And there, my friends, is the amazing wheel of color known as the color wheel. Now this one, you can see, has all of the little glass colors on it. And they are made of glass, a very thin layer of glass. And you can see that uh, mine are all intact. If any of these blades are missing from your color wheel, then the color wheel obviously is gonna to have to be replaced. Now, sometimes these color wheels just wear out. For instance, if your particular television is making a whirring sound that sounds like somebody's stuck a hair dryer in the back of your uh, television, it's very possible that the motor in your color wheel is bad. So the lenses aren't bad, but the actual color wheel itself has something wrong with it. Now this one I notice when I spin it, makes a little bit of a scratching sound. That may or may not be a problem. But I think in my case, mine's in good shape, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put the housing back on. If you end up having to replace your color wheel, just be sure to very carefully place this housing back inside the unit. And the way I did it was, is I put it up against the side here and then pushed it down into the unit. And then you might need a pair of needle nose pliers like these to get that screw back into there, the one we're looking at right there. Also, once you get the housing back in, make sure that you get these two plugs put back in, or wires, 
So with the, uh, the thin one on the left and the thicker one with the gray wires goes on the right. Once you get the unit all put back together, one thing you can do is put a piece of tape on this interlock and then go ahead and plug in your power cord and turn on the unit and see if it goes. If your light doesn't light up, then obviously you have a bad lamp. In my case, I check the fans, make sure both of the fans are turning. You can see this one's turning here. And there's one way back in the back there behind the, this light. That's the one we cleaned up earlier. Now, I was told by the guy who sold me this TV that it needed a bulb, and that was the reason it didn't work. Well, in this case, I think all she needed was a good cleanup because I turned it on after doing all the work we just did, and the unit's working. Let's go around to the front, and I'll show you what kind of a picture I've got here on my workbench. And you can see here on the screen, it says, check signal cable. So we are operating at full capacity here on this particular TV. So I hope this uh, video has helped you out and maybe helped you troubleshoot some problems. Like I said, in our case, we didn't have a bad color wheel or a bad lamp. We just needed a good cleanup. If you need some more tips, you can check out my other video. It's the one with a billion views. Well, not quite a billion, but a bunch of them. And uh, it'll have some more tips that maybe I forgot on to mention on this particular video. Also, uh, you can check out my channel, subscribe, and leave some comments, and I'll try and help you if you ever get stuck. By the way, in putting the unit back together, which obviously I haven't here for uh, demonstration purposes, but uh, in order to put it back together, just go back through the video and watch it in reverse, and you'll see just how to put the unit back together. Thank you for watching, and have a great day, and I hope you get your TV working.